Welcome to Snark Marks, everybody. We are a very funny podcast out of the Central Valley of California. I'm Andrew, that's Dusty. Hey, hey. This is our uh, first movie podcast. Uh, we recorded a Joe Dirt podcast that you'll never hear. <laughs> it's never coming out. It's never coming out. Dusty said the N-word too many times. Um, I'm just kidding. For the record, just kidding. Do not isolate that. Um, yeah. We had a multitude of... <laughs> uh of technical uh fiascos uh audio there were audio issues there was a syncing issue dusty's computer kept killing itself um so you'll never hear that fucking podcast so i might be able to find some clips but i'm not gonna i'm a very busy guy wearing american sunglasses you know what i mean so right. um, wheeling, follow wheeling. us yeah follow us on all the uh socials uh at snark marks pod on twitter at snark marks pod on instagram Dusty's at Snark Mark D on Twitter. I am at Andrew Idell on Instagram. Please pump up the numbers, okay? Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, hit that like button. I really want you to hit the like button. Please, could you do that for me? Could you do that for America or Look at Palestine? Those sunglasses. If you were never yeah. going to do it before, do it for the American sunglasses. I'm surprised how good I look in these. You know, well, I'm not because I'm a <laughs> I'm a blue blooded American guy. You yeah, because you're mean? a goddamn patriot. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I <laughs> I was not at the Capitol. In anything but spirit, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah. The, the, J- July 4th, January 6th, same place in Andrew's heart. They hold the Should have happened place. on the same day. <laughs> Born on the January 6th. <laughs> uh, um, now, what we're Andy doing... Andy Doodle. Andy yeah. Doodle was born on January 6th. <laughs> what we're doing in uh, principle for the next few podcasts are... For the snark marks, and this is important, uh, for the snark marks in particular, trying to find out what we believe to be the funniest movie ever made. Yeah, if you're if you're mad at our list, which we'll have Kai on to shit on our list pretty soon, which is fine. <laughs> A lot but of this movies. Is for us. The history of movies was considered. <laughs> Go back and listen to the nomination podcast, of which there is still great debate happening. Yeah, we still uh, don't know what the, what the other movie we're going to do is. But all of those movies, they all have one thing in common. They're all narratively structured films in the yeah. classic sense. Truly, if you were to search Andrew's heart of heart, right next to his love for January 6th yeah. is his belief that Jackass 2 is the greatest movie or the funniest movie ever made in human history, at least. But from what we've seen, it was a yeah. uh, caveat. It was the funny the it was the funniest movie I've ever seen in theaters. It was the la- the hardest I've ever laughed in theaters. Um, this is testing whether this this whole shebang bang is testing whether it's funnier than you know you know my front runner. My front runner is Dumb and Dumber, but right. we will we will see how that goes. So we're treating Jackass Two as the control for our experiment because it's not an act. Well, it's a movie uh, because it's made to be a movie, but it is not yeah. narratively structured like a movie. Uh, I'm glad it, you made that distinction for once in your fucking life. Yeah. <laughs> is it it's, a movie? Really? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it's, uh, it's a movie. Dude. It's theatrical release. So it's an hour and a half long. <laughs> uh, Jackass two released September 22nd, 2006. Uh, I, I was very much on the train oh, for yeah. Jackass 2, um, uh, because I loved Jackass the movie. I loved all of the stuff. This is, we're at the end, kind of. I'll, I have some stuff to talk about later, but we're kind of at the end of the first golden age, or maybe the, the real golden age of Jackass and all the Jackass satellite things, you know. You're talking uh, about Jackass 2 is the end of that? Yeah, it's sort okay. of 2006 is kind of where my cutoff is. Uh, I love Jackass 3 in many ways. Jackass Forever was really fun. Nostalgia Trip, I always enjoy, you know, Knoxville and Steve-O and those guys getting up to shenanigans. But I think this is really the end of the golden period uh, for, for like, this particular thing. Well, how long did Viva La Bam go? Because, like, Viva La Bam was still killing it, right? 2003 to 2006. Okay. Same thing with... Wild Boys. Same thing with Wild Boys. Ended in 2006. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, this is right right, right at the end. Right in the pocket. Uh, Homewrecker, 
with Ryan Dunn, 2006. <laughs> Uh, or maybe 2005. We're, count, we're counting Homewrecker, huh? <laughs> well, it had I, him watched, in it. I watched it and enjoyed it. I watched oh, course, it and enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, it's uh, you know the the Tony Hawk the Fed, the being in the Tony Hawk games, all of that sort of stuff is all in this really tight window of the show because it it's kind of insane. But we'll get to it later. We want to try to do the movie stuff first, get that out of the way. Um, the thing that I really thought of this whole time was like jackass the movie was such a success in taking the idea of the show and elevating it because now it's rated r now they can do so much more stuff and it's like well how do you beat the first movie you have to you have to really try hard to come up with stuff to beat the first movie and the opening scene of the first movie where they're in the shopping cart and it's in slow motion and there's all the bricks and it's introducing all the, the guys like that's an iconic shot and an iconic piece of cinema to well, me. Well, that's, that's when you realize, Oh, they have a budget this time. Like, right. right. They're ma- this, Oh, they are making a real ass movie. Yeah. This is yeah. going to be insane. Cause the first movie was, uh, I mean, there's some iconic moments in the first movie, but the first movie was still just like a very long episode of the TV show. Yeah. This movie, they're on location. They've got they've got the whole s- giant set pieces. They've got all this thing. They were given, I bet, I bet, I bet the second movie's budget was twice the first movie. Did you look up the budgets on this? Yeah, I have the budgets and the um, the grosses and stuff. Yeah. Did cause... you look up the Jackass One budget? Yeah. Of course oh, okay, I did. Cool. Come on. Listen, who are, you, I... <laughs> who are you talking to? I I, uh, I like being impressed and surprised by yeah. Dusty. You know what I mean? Um. So I think they pulled it off. I think the running of the bulls to open the second movie tops the shopping cart scene from the first movie. I think the running of the bulls is so cool. And the fact that you don't see it initially, you just see everybody running and then yeah. it, and then it pans out and it's the bulls. And then of course you could tell there are setups like there's, you know, oh, they're yeah. setting up one shots with the bull and Johnny Knoxville and the bull and whoever else. But like, I think that pulls it off. That brings you in like, oh yeah, the state, they can still, there's still more runway on this thing for things they can do that are crazy. Yeah. And you could even like, it zeroed in on their faces. And I remember the laughs for every face reveal <laughs> Yeah, in this whole thing. Like when, uh, when they show Steve-O and he just looks terrified, Steve-O very uh, famously terrified of bulls. He's this. He's that's the, the thing. That's the one thing he doesn't want anything yeah. to do with is a bull. And you'll know. I don't think Steve O got hit by a bull in this opening sequence. But and then you see. Did you watch the commentary for Jackass Two at any point? No, because I I was gonna for this I was gonna bust out my Jackass Two unrated DVD. Yeah, that I had, but I couldn't find it. I looked Damn. in my movie case and I, it's, it's not where it should and, be. And you never in the past watched the commentary. No, I never had. Oh, so I had, comment- to, I had commentary- to buy it, but the, oh. I didn't, I don't know that the commentary track comes with it. Maybe it did, but I didn't look. You bought it on Paramount plus dog. You don't have Paramount plus. Oh, I do. But I bought it before like a long time ago. Uh, when, okay. When Jackass forever came out, they had like a bundle. So I have all four of them. Well, yeah. uh, the commentary is very funny. They just make fun of bam the whole time. Um, I don't even think Bam was there, and they were just making fun of Bam for being all. I called him a, a limp wristed goth ringmaster. <laughs> yeah, like he's, the, he's he's always like, talking out of the side of his mouth, and, <laughs> and he's, he's like, like channeling Chris Angel hard in this one. There's a lot of scarves <laughs> and like top hats and shit. He's just trying to be magical and mysterious the whole time, but they make fun of him the whole time. But there, there's like. You could. It's funny what they notice. They talk about like background stuff. I haven't watched the commentary in probably fifteen years, but I remember mm. certain parts of it. And when they show, there's a part in the running of the bulls where they show Ryan Dunn and uh, Dave England, and they're looking backwards at the bulls, and then they both at the same time look at the screen, and they have mirroring cock eyes. Mm. Like <laughs> Dave England has his right eye closed and Ryan Dunn has his left eye closed or something mm. like that. Oh, it's great. It looks hilarious. But like every face reveal there is big. And th- this is where we, we have to get to like, okay, first of all, this is early 2000s skate culture that took over the world. Like me and my friends were always doing dumb. I got hurt on so many scooters when I was a kid. Uh, I had a lot of head injuries, probably explains the glasses. And uh, they, 
completely like jackass formed a generation of kids right of like in in not only getting hurt but like comedy and and what they think are funny and messing with your friends and like all these things and and like anarchy um it's like and, it's it's fight club without all the philo- without all the bullshit philosophy like without the the intro to philosophy class that uh tyler durden thinks he took or thinks makes him smart or whatever like it's it's to me it's it represents like a restlessness that you feel when you're young and particularly i can only speak to my experience but i know my, me and my friends the same thing when you're a young man there's this restlessness that you sort of have and it's like it used to unfortunately like be channeled into wars you had to go fight or like <laughs> some bullshit you had to go do or whatever and then or you formed a band or you became a skater or like you or had fights to do on the some- way to school Right, you had to do something with that energy. And Jackass was like the personification of, oh, that restlessness put into this band of misfits that went and did things that were so funny that you could also do. Because, like, I can't make Mission Impossible 2 or whatever. or uh, You know, that's out of my reach. But, like, if I have a little camcorder, me and my friends can go and harass people that are golfing. We we probably shouldn't go do that, but we can go do that. Like, you know, CKY yeah, sure. is even more that like CKY where Jackass was sort of born is even more like underground and, and sort of uh, grassroots because it was just Bam and his friends in the town he lived in. Yeah, you know? I, but I think I think people don't give enough credit to this being a genuinely special group of misfits that aren't just. Uh, dumb and aren't just afraid and like unafraid of getting hurt and aren't just like brave and stupid. These guys like in certain ways and people are going to kill me for saying this. So in certain ways, these guys are brilliant. Like some of the jokes that they tell the things that they set up. I mean, a lot of the setup stuff is like Jeff Tremaine and, and Spike Jones, but a lot of those guys have ideas themselves and even CKY like Brandon DiCamillo is like incredibly funny. Like yeah. these guys aren't, it's not like, a lot of people, and I know you're not saying this specifically, but a lot of people think that they could just go out and make jackass. Like, they don't see the talent that these guys have. But I was a teenager at that time. Yeah. I saw the videos my friends made. Some of <laughs> yeah. my friends being gen- genuinely kind of funny people. I saw some of the videos that I made. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not nearly as funny. Not nearly as polished and good and creative and, like, uh, diabolical. So, like... While this looks like a lot of this looks like it's talentless, like guys that are just drunk doing idiotic stuff, some of that's true. There's a lot here in terms of actual comedic ability. You oh know what I mean? yeah, I I wouldn't undersell uh, the the jackass guys because, like you said, you know, for every jackass, there's even the Dutsons or there's some other group of dudes that can do the exact same thing or can do gnarlier stunts or can do whatever, but it's not, the chemistry isn't the same. And no. like, they are in my mind, so lucky that they found Johnny Knoxville or that Johnny Knoxville found them or however it works. Cause like it all sort of works through him. Like Bam has his own inherent charisma and those get the the CKY guys have their own charisma. Steve-O definitely has a charisma that's all his own. But Knoxville, you buy as sort of this alternative, weird leading man kind of person. But he's because he wants to be Buster Keaton, I think. I think that's the goal is this sort of silent movie, big exaggerated uh, stunts kind of guy. But he's in the 2000s. So it's it's filtered through all of the 90s and the 2000s sort of stuff, but he, he has charm. He's funny. He's a, an attractive looking dude. Like they, they happened upon a group of people that had such great chemistry that could also be funny. It could also pull this stuff off. It's like, uh, because this is a podcast that has a person who loves wrestling, like ECW was hardcore wrestling, but it was his, uh, its own thing that had its own set of characters that connected with people. And they had Heyman, Paul Heyman at the, at the front of it. There are so many 
wrestling companies that did wilder stunts or crazier angles or did whatever, but they didn't have the magic of all the components. And Jackass has the magic of all the components and, and happened to come along at the exact right moment in culture that needed, that needed that thing. Johnny Knoxville was the, was the coolest guy on the planet to like a, a bunch of teenagers, uh, millions of teenagers and bam, what, what bam and all them with CKY did with the skits that they would do. I mean, I like, I, I, I'm going to say it again. Like Brandon DiCamillo is like an unsung hero of this entire thing. That dude well, is like, that dude was a special like mind for this stuff. And I say all that knowing these guys are just kicking each other in the nuts a lot of the time, you know, but like right. a lot of the, the, the nuance and the, the little funny stuff. Like I, I, the Buster Keaton thing is, is a good point because there's certain things you can see are like this is slapstick this is vaudeville this is uh like like silent movie stuff filtered through these disgusting like horrible things that you're watching so like right through like skate culture or or whatever it is you know like in sort of the same way that like all these things coming along at the moment they're needed like clerks comes along at the at the time when that particular sentiment matched what so many people felt and no one was saying it, you know, Nirvana comes along and matches this sentiment that all of these people are feeling that no one is saying, like, I think Jackass doesn't get enough credit for tapping into, you know, rightly or wrongly a feeling that a lot of suburban kids and teenagers, uh, and, and beyond that, even they bought beyond those people, like feelings that they had of like, what can we do? What is it like, and what does it mean? And like, how, what do we do now? You know, we don't, the, the end of the nineties and the end of the two thousand or the beginning of the two thousands has all of this terror sort of underneath it. And it's like, these guys are willing to hurt themselves for the, for the laughter of other people. And that was like a good catharsis in that moment, you know? Yeah. And if, if, uh, if the kids in the seventies had video cameras, I would bet jackass would have happened then, you know, it's like, it's like this is something that kids have always thought this stuff was funny. Right. Uh, the videotapes weren't as widespread back in the day. Kids have always done stuff like this. But, of course, the first generation of kids <laughs> that have affordable cameras that they can carry around are going to be pooping it onto a little tiny toilet. <laughs> right. And, well, and, like, Mick Foley, you know, has a has home video of him and his friend's backyard wrestling in the early eighties, late seventies, you know, like it is always something that has existed. But like you said, this is the first time it's really been widely put out there and put out there with the group of people that can make it happen. Like that are perfect to be the avatars for this, uh, for this thing. At they the moment, they it happens. They assembled the Avengers of fucking morons and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so- so the the first few skits, there's the puppet show, which has a very funny line where Chris Pontius says, uh, make sure my whole wiener is out there. I want to look good. <laughs> for yeah. the, uh, Chris like, Pontius, uh, under, maybe the funniest guy in the whole thing. An underrated. Uh, but like the puppet show, the Valentine, there's the fire hose rodeo. That's OK. Um the first the to me the first really good bit in the whole movie is the strong man with uh Pontius and and Bam. So like, Bam Bam looks at the camera and goes, So they, they, they were gonna have a, a weight at the bottom and then he hits the thing and it hits me in the nuts, but why don't we have a big dildo? And instead of my nuts, it's my ass. <laughs> right. Well, and the way he's explaining it yeah. is like uh, like he's a comedic genius and he's working out this this joke and working out the timing like oh i should change this word and i should (laughs) i should pause here and and all of the but he's he's just like no it's way funnier yeah if it doesn't hit me in the nuts but like the you know the thing that benefits jackass and also can make it hard is like it's it is a, a shatter it's like a shotgun against a wall like if the bit doesn't work for you in 30 seconds, that bit will be over and there'll be some other thing that might work for you. You know, the, well, yeah. And one theme throughout this entire movie, because like 
first of all, we can't we can't blow by the puppet show because <laughs> sure. we see this intro and we're like, okay, they're really going after this. They're really they're really putting a lot of money into this. And then they hit you in the face with Chris Pontius getting his wiener bitten by a snake. <laughs> yeah. And they don't, and it, and th- this is this is the creativity of the guys. And uh, the, once again, people are going to laugh at me saying creativity, but this is the creativity of Tremaine and everybody. They don't just have Chris Pontius put a little sock on his wiener, and then somebody holds a snake up to it and it bites it. Right. They set up a whole puppet show <laughs> with Johnny Knoxville dressed as a magician, and he puts his dick through a hole, and they're doing commentary in the background, and then the snake bites him, and then it cuts to like the camera work and the editing in all of this made this movie twice as good as it was like, yeah. so t- now to the strong man. Well, bam. And, or, well, and I was going to say one of the things that's like quintessential to the jackass experience is that everybody else is there, even when it's not their stunt. So yeah. like everyone is there to react. And that's sort of like a thing that you do with your friends. I'm going to do this dumb thing because my friends are here and I'm trying to get them to react. And it's not, in just a, a a vacuum it's like all the other guys are enjoying themselves watching this stupid thing that pontius is doing and they're cheering him on and they're reacting and it brings you in like now you're in the crew of guys yeah. you know it, it feel it doesn't feel isolating it feels communal and i think that's another thing that jackass is really good at doing which is making you feel like you're part of the team or you're part of the crew because you see all the other people in the crew, you even see the camera people and how they react. And you're like, Oh yeah, if I was filming this, I might throw up in the sink too. You know, like it, it, they let you in. It's not, they don't gatekeep the humor or the, or the thing to themselves. They want you to come in. You know? Yeah. And they hide things until they have to show it to you. Like right. it's not, they're not going to like, they're not going to uh, – they realize – whoever edited and filmed – like we, we saw who filmed the movie, but whoever edited the movie realized the comedy in the surprise reveal. Yeah. So, like, they're like – it's it starts with Bam being, like, the, given this, this explanation as to how he came up with the joke, and then you realize these guys are just having fun on set, which is a brilliant thing to include. And then it cuts to Pontius dressed as a strong man, and I believe an American flag wrestling singlet <laughs> – yeah. with a fake mustache on like an old timey curl, curled mustache on and he goes today's question is it wrong to be strong <laughs> you be the judge we still haven't seen bam yeah they don't show bam until he turns around with his sledgehammer and hits the thing at the bottom of the of the machine and then they just follow the dildo up and then you just the only time you see bam is as soon as it makes contact with his ass so like <laughs> Yeah. And it just makes it twice as funny. If this is a wide shot where you see Bam sitting up there, it's not as surprising. And they, they, you could tell on, I don't know, I can't remember in Jackass because I noticed this more in this move in this watching of this movie than I did in any of the other wa- watchings. I don't know if they did it in Jackass one, but like it's the same thing with the Anaconda ball pit. Right. So they have like, uh, there's a part where like Knoxville is like wrestling with the the Anaconda. And you're watching that, and it cuts his arm, and then they switch camera really quick, and it's already completely wrapped around the bottom the the bottom half of Ryan Dunn. Like they don't show you it slithering up to Ryan Dunn. They don't show you it slowly getting him. They cut smash straight to it, literally dragging Ryan Dunn it's, to the ground because it's already on top of it's him. It's got him. Yeah. Well, and they know. Like the interesting thing is not like they don't. There's no dead air. They're not, they're not, because it probably no, took, they were probably in that ball pit for a long time. Yeah. You know, and like, they're just like, take the best minute. We just, we're only interested in the best minute of this thing. Like, yeah. They might've been in there an hour, who knows? But like the, the, it's also, like you said, I, and I, I think this speaks to the communal part too, is there's, there's a lot of jokes in this movie that aren't part of the main whatever the main skit is they're doing that make me laugh when I watch it. Like they do, they set up a mini loop, uh, like a mini loop ramp and they're, they're trying to flip them through it on a mini bike. 
and Aaron, Aaron, uh, Danger Aaron keeps trying to do it and he can't do it. And then other guys are trying to do it. And there's a guy who's looking at them while he's revving the mini bike. And some guy off camera, I think it's Knoxville, but some guy just goes, he's mocking the loop. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. I don't know why, but that, that particular part of that, cause that's not, that's not a very funny premise. It's cool. It's cool to see it's them cool. pull it off. See, they do cool. They don't always do funny. Like Matt Hoffman back flipping off the dock is cool. Yeah, when on the uh with the rocket <laughs> with the rocket bike is cool. They I remember reading or maybe hearing something that the one of the things they cracked while they were making the TV show was like it is the failure of the attempt that is funny. People don't tune into Jackass to see great stuntmen completing great stunts generally. Cause yeah. like you can see that's in real movies. You, you, you know, like it's not, they're not going for impressive. It's let's get a bunch of people who aren't coordinated and aren't good at this to try to do something impressive and then watch them fail at it. And that's why it's funny. You and know? every once in a while they'll land it <laughs> and it'll be magical and they'll show that too. And that's cool. Yeah. Like you intersperse the makings, the makes with all of the fails. Right. Well, and it's like, also showing that this stuff is hard, which I, which sounds stupid as like a key to it, but like showing that you don't, <laughs> you don't just nail every thing you attempt, but like there is joy and there is humor and there is purpose in even the attempt of it. Cause they, they spend a long time on that mini loop. Nobody's making it because it's not easy to do that. Even if, even if it's a stupid thing to do, it's hard to do you know yeah so, yeah and, and th- by the way any any of you guys with kids or any of you guys that watch youtube watch how much dude perfect has stolen from jackass <laughs> that's all i want to say okay this is this is the 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 one arm swisher <laughs> shut up <laughs> you fucking assholes yeah <laughs> uh the fish hook god damn <laughs> uh steve-o i believe has admitted did, did you did you skip over the the, the dick farm no, no, no. Oh, I did on accident. Sorry. Uh, Don't you skip over the dick farm, Dusty. Uh, Bam, Mar- Bam Margera, quote, here we are at some random ass ranch. <laughs> this, is the, uh, this, is the, this is the brand. Here we are at some random ass ranch, and this is going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I also like, like we're talking a lot about the editing. They leave in the argument between Dunn and Bam where where Ryan Dunn is warming up the brand and yeah. Bam's getting mad because he thinks that he's doing it for too long. And he's like, all right, already. Yeah. And he goes, as soon as I take the flame off, it's going to go cold. Is that what you want to happen? And yeah. they're like, they're, keep going until we're ready to film. Yeah. And so like, uh, uh, basically they take a brand that you're going to use for a cow, but it's a dick and balls mm-hmm. and they are going to, brand bam margera with this thing and knoxville is there and bam is there and ryan dunn is there and ryan dunn's gonna do the branding and they have bam ready and bam's like do it and dunn and i'm not i'm I'm not saying anything about bam margera here he barely puts it on <laughs> bam and bam's like fuck because <laughs> yeah. i have to imagine that fucking hurts so bad and, oh, dude, I, I burnt myself with hot oil the other day, and it didn't get any anything near to as bad as what happened to Bam Margera right here. It hurts really, really, really bad. Well, and this is like searing hot metal. Yeah. <laughs> like, they do it. You to ever touched ca- a stove? <laughs> yeah, like, uh, and, ba- and Bam, uh, and then they start arguing, because now Bam's mad that Ryan's not doing it good enough, <laughs> and yeah. so they have to keep doing it. And so he's like, he's like, stop moving. Yeah. He's like, hold still. (laughs) And so they finally do it. And bam sits in the, uh, in the water. And he's just like, that sucked. So bad. So bad. It's so, it's so crazy that he took this wound that he now has and put it immediately into a dirty cow's water trough. (laughs) I guess I didn't consider if the water was dirty or not. I, I just assumed it would be clean. Cause I, I I'm not an idiot, but yeah, I can watch, see, watch the watch the, the watch ugh. it again. I don't know if it was dirty water per se, but the trough was not clean. I can tell you that. Yeah. Um, and then they they show it. So then it cuts to like three days later, and they're at Bam's parents' house, and they go to show it to Bam's parents, and it looks 
awful. Like they've, uh, it's all outlined because he couldn't, uh, Brian Dunn couldn't get the same spot each time. So it's like a 3D dick, uh, like a hologram dick is what, uh, it's a, hol- Bam calls a hologram it. dick. Yeah. It's yeah. A hologram dick. And, uh, it doesn't look good. I have to say that it looks bad. Uh, I don't know well, what it's supposed to look a, like. This is our yeah. first shot of one of the best parts of Jackass. One of the one of the smartest things they ever did was include April and Phil Margera, um, including somebody's parents, uh, <laughs> right? To play our parents, basically, As the voice of when, reason, right? To well, any sort of concerned person, you know, like. Uh, yeah, but uh, April and Phil were perfect. Uh, Phil Margera yeah, is yeah. hilarious. Well, and, what did he say? He goes, uh, he goes. If you were going to do that, you might as well. You should have put a bigger one on there. That puny thing's embarrassing. I yeah, think was his line. Bigger and more realistic. That's what he <laughs> said. What Phil bigger said. and more yeah. realistic. <laughs> he, no, he's not mad that his son now has uh, what is known as a dick farm on his yeah. on his butt and has possibly infected his skin with this stupid ass brand. He's mad because it's a small dick. <laughs> It's a small what, dick, you need which a is dick on there. really funny. Yeah. Um, okay, so the fish hook. Fish hook. Yeah. Uh, another successful thing that Jackass does is it's like it it is visceral. Like when yeah. Stevo puts this yeah. is putting this hook in his mouth. I've never done that. I'll never do that. No. But I empathize. I'm like, God damn, that has to hurt. It's hard to watch the 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 sound that he makes when yeah. he's finally going through. He sounds like a dying sheep. Well, um, and Pontius is with him, and Pontius has to help him get it through his lip. Which also, yeah. as his friend, man, that's a great friend. I don't know that I want a friend that that's that is that great. You almost uh, need a question mark at the end of that, man. That's a great friend, <laughs> um, right? The the this was and and you made a good point. It's like a visceral thing because it's like. They appeal to so many different emotions in this movie. Right. There are there are very funny, quippy lines. There is like watching this, watching literally through your fingers. There's there's parts where you're afraid for people's lives, like when Knoxville with the bulls. There's parts where it's just dis- just disgustingly gross. Yeah. Uh, there's 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 so many. It hits basically everything, and then even the, this one less, but some of the other stuff that they've done, but even like kind of towards the end when they do the song and dance number, you almost like, it's almost sentimentality. Like they're your friends. You right. know what I mean? Like you see the two, cause every, except for Knoxville, everybody's basically in a pair. It's like Dunn and bam. And then danger, Aaron and Dave England, and then Preston and Wee man. And then uh, Pontius and Steve-O like yeah. everybody has a, a pair. And then Knoxville is like the, the glue that holds them all together. So like the the dynamic between Pontius and Steve-O, whoever thought of Wild Boys was a genius. <laughs> yeah, well, because um, after they get the fish hook through, Steve-O's like, all right, cast me out, god damn it. <laughs> uh, and, so, and, and, and Pontius does the like cast motion and Steve-O <laughs> moves with it with his head and then yeah. jumps into the water. So they're basically fishing with Steve-O <clears throat> in shark-infested waters. There are hammerhead sharks that they don't seem that worried about. They're like, okay, hammerheads, he's swimming with the hammerheads. And then when the Mako sharks get there, they're like, Steve-O, get the fuck <laughs> out of there. And uh, they, uh, Steve-O ends up kicking one that was looking like it was going to bite his foot off. Uh, and even Manny, yeah. the animal handler, who was also an unsung hero, big ups to Manny. Uh, very funny. He, Bam, Bam just took a golden dildo up his ass at high speed. <laughs> yeah. That's what happened there. <clears throat> so Manny's like, you're so lucky you kicked it when it was coming for your foot. And and so when they get back on land or on the boat, Steve has to take the hook back out of his mouth, which is its own <laughs> terrible experience. And then he goes, thank you so much, God. <laughs> and, yeah, thank uh, you. God <laughs> and Pontius goes, you bastard. Yeah. And like that's again, uh, it is. It also works, like you said. There are clips of Jackass that I think I could pretty much show anyone in my life. I couldn't show everybody everything, but I could show someone something. You know, like yeah, uh, somebody might think the butter bean knocking out Knoxville is funny. 
Somebody else might think the fish hook thing is funny. Someone else might think the whatever. Like Wee I don't man, know. Wee, Wee man kicking himself in the forehead. In, right. In we, yeah. I, the, I can't remember if that's the TV show or the movie. Um, I think that's the first movie. I try. I tried to watch the first movie last night, but I ran out of time, and so. Ah, okay. Um, or like the the stunt that they're going to pull on Bam in a minute. Like there are different things that I think you could show different people, and I think that's also why Jackass works because, like you said, they have these pairs of people that have their own charisma. They don't all have to be together, and they can all work independently and and fulfill one of those uh, niches that somebody might think is funny. You know, yeah. There's that's why they. It's because they hit the wide range of appeal, right? It's like there's yeah. even there's even parts of this that are like uh, impressive skate stunts. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything for the electric stool or the cigarette? I'll just say the cigarette. Sometimes they do interstitials, and this is Knoxville blindfolded, smoking a cigarette, and then just getting his shit rocked by a bull for well, no for no reason. <laughs> And that one's better with no intro. The intro yeah. is Knoxville goes <laughs> and puts a puts a puts a bandana over his eyes and then lights a cigarette and gets hit by a bull. Um, yeah. But the uh, what's where's the fucking card throwing machine? Oh, right. Yeah. Is uh, is such a funny line. They've got Wee Man sitting on a stool and there's a professional card thrower. Uh, there's probably not a such thing as a professional card thrower, but there's a guy who's really good at card throwing. <laughs> Uh, who? How much do you make on the card throwing circuit? Sure, you know what yeah. I mean. You get a free deck of cards or something. <laughs> um, and he's pretending to throw cards at Wee Man's bare butt, and while Wee Man's sitting on a stool, and this is—it's just a funny prank, like because yeah. the stool is the, electrified. The stool is is electrified, so he th- he's, he's he's like every time he fl- every time he hits me, it fucking shocks me. I gotta get up. <laughs> he's like, uh, and then Steve was like, uh, "I would never, we man, I would never use a car throwing machine <laughs> on you." Yeah, uh, that's that's good. the The fact that they show the dude throwing the cards through the very thin paper as like yeah. a demonstration of his skill is yeah. also like a good setup. To have Wee Man watch that to go like, yeah, I bet if that hit me in the ass, that probably hurt. It wouldn't feel great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, the the if you watch that one, I learned this on the commentary. Bam is so drunk during this shot. Like <laughs> when 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 they're introing it, Bam standing there with his like shoulder out. You could tell that he is just trying to hold it together, dude. <laughs> should, I just got to be in this in, in this insert shot. Yeah. Uh, and he held the he helped hold the newspaper when they. Oh threw. right. Yes. Uh, Bam explaining how he comes up with his bits is very funny. Uh, for yeah. the bungee jump, uh, he essentially He's like, I just drew a, I just drew a picture of a fat ass on the top of a bridge, and then the little guy with the bungee cord. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, I don't write the ideas down; I just fax them pictures of my idea. Uh, yeah. Which low key, uh, maybe Bam admitting that he doesn't know how to read or uh, <laughs> that he can't write, but. Uh, he, wrote it, he he invented a language, dude. Didn't you know that? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's uh, this is a good visual bit. That's it. It's just uh, as soon as you see it, you're like, okay, I know what this. I I know this is going to be funny. And it's a great. I wonder what's going to happen. What's yeah. this going to look like? Like right. so. Basically, Preston Lacey is they built a little like uh, almost like a platform off of a bridge. And he's attached to Wee Man. So Preston Lacey's a big, like, 500-pound fat guy. And then Wee Man is obviously a midget. And <laughs> Wee Man jumps. Well, calling him Wee Man is hilarious. Wee Man is a really funny name. But um, Wee Man jumps off, and he he's he's heavy enough to pull Preston off. And Preston is so scared he's shaking up there. Because apparently Preston's really afraid of heights. He doesn't like heights, yeah. And so he pulls he pulls Preston Lacey off the top, and then... Preston falls, and while Preston falls, Wee Man is coming up after pulling Preston down. So then we Preston passes Wee Man, and once the bungee cord gets tight, just yanks Wee Man straight into yeah, the just water. Just spikes Wee Wee Man into <laughs> this water at like terminal velocity. Yeah, uh, yeah. but it's, it's like hitting cement from that speed. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny to just watch it go woo woo, and then bam, just yeah. into the water. You know, like. Uh, and uh, you, you hear, I love, like, so Preston was so scared before, 
And then in the water, you hear Wee Man go, did I pull you? And Preston goes, oh, fuck yeah. Like, I'm all happy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. That's <laughs> – um, so this is also the movie where they introduce uh, Bad Grandpa. As far as I remember, this is the first uh, iteration of Irving Zisman. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I th- – the the prosthetic old people stuff is my least favorite part of the movie. Like I wish they would literally take all of that out of the movie. Like, See, I uh, this fun. one I like because uh, Bad Grandpa. I don't like the Spike Jones one. I, that one's like really un. <laughs> He's clearly making people uncomfortable. And, your, like... your titty out is a funny line. <laughs> your titty out and that dude walking around in a circle of his own stuff yeah. to stay away from that from her yeah. is funny. But uh, <clears throat> this one I do like because another part of Jackass that like knoxville is really good at is in society we we assume that there's this social contract and that's why people don't uh freak out or people don't do uh like crazy things and the jackass guys trade on that social nicety as a way to to get humor like one of the big ways is in the first movie when he comes back with the car all smashed up and he's sort of indignant with the uh, with the guy who owns the rental car yeah. place, <laughs> but that guy's trying to uphold like some sort of social nicety, and he's being pushed to his limit by Knoxville because Knoxville will just say anything, and he knows that he can push this guy so far. And you're the, letting that bulldog mouth overload that puppy dog ass. <laughs> yeah, the, that's, that's the line. that's the bad grandpa that. Uh, it's because there's a guy, the bad grandpa's letting the kids smoke and he's letting them drink and he's, cur- and he's cursing. And there's a guy who's trying to appeal to the, <laughs> we're trying to have a society kind of situation. And Knoxville's just basically telling this guy to fuck off. And I don't know how he knows, but Johnny Knoxville knows this guy is, I can push this guy to a point and he's not going to do anything. You know, I think John. I think Knoxville wanted him to hit him. Uh, like I, I think like Knoxville's the type of guy. Like for the footage, like Knoxville has no problem if this particular guy hits him. Like, wants to freak out. Uh, him. Yeah, I guess yeah. maybe maybe that. The, he got the, hit by a bull, right? On purpose. <laughs> the lack of fear, I guess, is what I, is a yeah. thing that I'm not counting on. But like, uh, the whenever he goes, uh, I, he draws a fake line and he goes cross that line. And the guy crosses it and he goes, ah, you crossed the line. (laughs) Like he's just pushing this poor dude to his limit. And the dude backs down and walks off. And then he says, uh, that long hair don't cover that redneck boy. (laughs) And that you're letting that puppy dog mouth overload that bulldog or, uh, your yeah. Bulldog mouth overload that puppy dog ass. Yeah. That to me is very funny, but I, I could do with less of the old man, old lady stuff and a whole movie of bad grandpa was like, not, for me i, I never watched it i was yeah. i was like as soon as they but the old man balls one like i just hate i just don't think it's funny like i don't like pranks on unsuspecting people uh yeah. in that way like keep god out of california is fucking gold <laughs> right it's gold yeah. it's so funny uh we could just skip to that one we can go back to what's what's after this but yeah. Pawnee is it's just it's a shot of a, of a sidewalk in la with a bunch of like uh like uh uh, barriers around a sewer like an open manhole basically and then chris pontius dressed as satan <laughs> shoots out of the sewer and lands and picks up his sign that says keep god out of california yeah well that's from and, the that's from the show yeah too, it's right a, it's, it's a, a t- for the show yeah yeah uh, whenever Pontius comes out, he goes, tell Charlie Daniels to write a song about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Pontius also, he's like, oh man, when I got shot out, I landed right on my head. He goes, oh man, I landed right on my head. <laughs> he's like, I am fucked up. <laughs> and I assume there was more to that skit, but he was like, he couldn't do it. But that's too funny not to leave in, you know? Oh yeah, you gotta keep that um, in. I want to, uh, we can't do every, every one, like the B limo is funny. Uh, oh, B limo is great. So they, the, the, uh, danger Aaron, I mean, no, uh, Dave England, we man, Steve-O and Ryan Dunn are in a limo. And this is, the, we got to talk about this one because this is, there's a couple, there's a couple jokes on, in this movie where they go the extra mile. Like yeah. they, they, they think of the little detail that's going to make this just over the top funnier. 
So like later on, this happens with with Wee Man when they say this is the dis, the disappearing act or something like that. When yeah. Wee Man is laying on the, did you notice he's wearing ruby slippers and he clicks them together <laughs> while the woman is laying under? On no, I didn't notice that. So they That's funny. basically it's Wee Man laying on a bed and a giant huge fat woman jumps on top of him and makes him disappear. But all you see is his legs under and he's wearing ruby slippers and he's clicking them together. Under That's, the woman. Really, that's really funny. But, so it's with this, it's like they, they throw a bunch of bees into the limo and immediately Ryan Dunn gets on his back and starts trying to kick the window out. And <laughs> well, then, they, the, they pull up cause they think they're going to a photo shoot yeah. and they hear the guys jump on the limo. And as soon as they do, Steve goes, close that fucking <laughs> sunroof. Cause he knows they knew something was going to yeah. happen. Um, so but then, the, yeah. the extra, the extra thing that they put on top of it is they put the marbles on the ground. Yeah. Uh, and because you could just do the bees and then eventually let them out. But if you put the marbles on, it's just an extra <laughs> thing that adds to yeah. it. It's like the pubes at the end. I was going to say, yeah, the, there's a part at the end that's that also. And this is a, uh, a little less conversation, a little more action by Elvis is playing during this scene, which is a really good song to put. Underrated uh, soundtrack in this movie. Yeah. Uh, Wolf Mother's all over the soundtrack. Wolf Mother fucking ripped yeah. in 2006. I want to briefly talk about the rake jump only because I don't think I could do like, there's a lot of this stuff that I couldn't do, but yeah, the Steve-O just like walking out, knowing this thing's going to hit him right in the fucking face. Yeah. <laughs> he jumps on the, the end of a rake not unlike Sideshow Bob in uh, Cape Fury from The Simpsons, and just lets oh, and, this and, thing... I, and, and, and like 15 episodes of The Simpsons. Yeah, and lets this rake hit him right in the face. And that is jackass in a nutshell. Is like, that guy has no self-preservation mechanism. Because I don't think I could do it. Like I... It's the best rake jump of all time. <laughs> uh, he does... He they These guys, they know how to fall. Right. Uh, shout out to Jim Ross, because <laughs> he leads with his forehead. It yeah. hurts. It hurts like shit, but you don't want that thing hitting you in the nose. Right, you're so, not going to uh, die he, if it hits you in the forehead. He takes it right in the forehead, yeah. and that sucks. And I don't, I don't think I. It depends on how much I get paid to do it, but uh, he full commits to that thing. He yeah. stomps on that rake. Uh, the riot test, maybe the most, fam- I'd say top three most famous bit in this entire movie. Uh, they go. Yeah, that's one of the gnarliest ones for sure. They go to some like some company that builds uh anti riot equipment and they blow the the thing opens and you just see the mortar or whatever it is and they blow it up and Dave it cuts to Dave England and he's just shaking his head back and forth and he looks it, well, terrified. It, it's it's so it's seven hundred rubber BB rubber balls. Yeah. And it, they shoot it five hundred feet per second out of this thing. Yeah. And uh as soon as it explodes it is Bam walks out and goes, fuck that. And then Ryan Dunn goes, fucking Christ on his way out. Yeah. And then it cuts to Dave England and Dave England looks like he's about to, he's about to get executed. He's like, I just can't do this one. Like this one's too gnarly. It's too yeah. much. And, and Knoxville it, goes, Oh man, that was great. Yeah. And he, then we cut to the outside and Knoxville is trying to convince Ryan Dunn to do this skit. And Ryan uh, Dunn's just sitting there smoking a cigarette. Yeah, and Dunn goes, you're insane. You're going to get killed. And uh, he goes, no, nah, man, it's it's just loud. It's going to hurt real bad, but it's just loud. Yeah. Uh, and I, Bam goes, if Knoxville goes through with this, I'll French kiss him. <laughs> and, it, and it just cuts to all three of them standing yeah. there. <laughs> and uh, Bam is visibly shaking. Yeah. And, and everybody uh, but everybody but Knoxville is wearing protective gear. Uh, Knoxville has goggles. Oh, he has goggles on, and he's covering his face with his hand. <laughs> and his nuts with his uh, other hand. hand. Yeah. And it goes off, and of course, <laughs> it fucking is terrible. Uh, oh, man. It looks like it sucks. It so looks bad. like it hurts so bad. And uh, <laughs> Bam uh, is on the ground, and Knoxville is like, are you crying? <laughs> And he goes, I'm a, uh, I'm a skateboarder. I don't get shot. Uh, yeah. And it cuts to Dunn, and, they're, and it cuts to him afterwards, and they're all going through their, their injuries. And Bam has his shirt up, and he goes, yeah, it looks like he got Bam in the stomach pretty good. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I something's wrong with Johnny Knoxville. We get to that uh, in a later portion of the thing. But, like, he's just addicted to footage. Yeah, well, that's what he tells Dunn outside. He goes, come on, man, it's footage. And yeah. he has no, he has less of a preservation instinct than almost any of the other guys. Because even 
you never really hear Bam or Ryan Dunn put up a protest, but it's interesting in this in this segment they left in the fact that these guys were like that's fucking crazy i don't want to do that uh yeah and it's it's just crazy that johnny knoxville is like a movie star at this point yeah like i think when when did when did uh dukes of hazard is 2004 so yeah dukes of hazard was out yeah it's when they made this movie yeah he's well he was he's in a movie with john he's in a john waters movie at this point too which is why i think john waters is in this movie for the magic trick um I like the gauntlet, uh, the 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 skate gauntlet thing where they have all the heavy bags that they're throwing at the guys while they're trying to skateboard this uh, or ride a bike through this obstacle course or whatever. But that's pretty short. That has a song called All My Friends Are Dead, which is a fucking banger. Uh, Great song. Pretty good. Shout out to Tony Hawk. He's yeah. In the building. Uh, and Tony Hawk blindfolded fucking goes through the gauntlet and they stop. That was not Tony Hawk. Well, that wasn't Tony Hawk. No, oh, it was just some just, guy. I, they didn't even put the guy's name on the fucking screen. Yeah. I think it was like one of the guys that got that got hit earlier, but it wasn't Tony Hawk that went through the blindfold. Um, there's and a guy like if you watch it in slow mo, there's a guy who grabs one of, one of the bags yeah. and like stops it, but he was trying to stop the bag in front of the guy's face, which would have been so funny if he pulled that <laughs> off. Right, he was because they're they're swinging bags back and forth, and these guys have to like skate through it uh, over a ramp. And a lot like Bam takes the worst one, and Bam knew how to fall funny. Like he knew how to make it look bad. He gets hit in the feet and then falls forward and gets hit in the chest. Yeah. Um, but one of the guys tried to stop one of the heavy bags, so the guy would just skate into it, and he completely missed it. And he gets all the way through blindfolded. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Um. There's, oh the, the the poop in the small bathroom. I'm not above it. Yeah. <laughs> What? A, who am I? You know, I don't want to see it today. I I knew what was coming. Yeah. I didn't look at it. Well, I looked at it. I didn't it, want to look at that it. That one gets me it. every time because I forget that it's right after the gauntlet. They do such a good job of like the pacing of surprising the surprising you, yeah, yeah. And it's like they don't give you any time. And like you said, they don't. It's not a wide shot at first. It's a close up of this bathroom. That's like a small you don't know miniature, what's going on. right? And you're like, what is this? And then all of a sudden, poop. <laughs> And of course yeah. it's Dave England because Dave England's through line in this in all of these movies is he has to poop constantly, apparently. Yeah, uh, and I don't know. I can't remember if you could tell it was a model the first time you watched it. Um but that surprise. The, I'll, n- n- not much beats the surprise of that in the theater. Like just not knowing that was coming. Um so that's that's the thing. This movie, the first time you see it, you'll never you'll never yeah. see Jackass two for the first time ever again in your life. Uh, yeah. The Toro Totter, of course, with the bull, another bull. I thing. think that was filmed in like Springville. Really? <laughs> yeah, I think it was like in the Central Valley, okay. but I can't remember. Um, nobody wants to do hold this. On, but hold Knoxville. on, the bull's not going to hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly nobody but Knoxville wants to do this because nobody wants to fuck with the bulls. Well, uh, the two funniest parts are Ryan Dunn when he gets knocked off and he runs and he just falls head first into the wall. Yeah, and then the bull fucks him up against the yeah. wall for a while. And then Pontius, uh, Pontius gets uh, gets his leg hit, and it's just him and him and Knoxville left. And Pontius at one point is just like fuck this and gets off and runs away. Yeah, and he tries to he doesn't like zero inch vertical trying to jump up the thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's very funny. Uh, and at the end, like you said, Steve-O hates bulls. And so he's like, fucking over. It's over. Let's <laughs> Well, because it. Knoxville it's... was off and he just kept going, I'm not out. I'm not yeah. out. He wanted to get a good shot of the bull fucking him up and he got it. <clears throat> yeah, he wanted more footage because he's an insane person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do we want to talk about the butt chug? I think you got to talk uh, about it. I mean, it's... Steve-O, Steve-O drinks a beer through a beer bong up his ass. It's very funny. Uh, if your asshole can't see the camera, the camera can't see your asshole right. is very funny. Uh, also, um, sorry, Dad, but nothing, yeah. nothing's keeping me out of this movie because he famously didn't do the car uh, stunt in the first movie because his dad would be disappointed in him. Uh, I can't believe the plunger worked. Right. He plunged all the all the <laughs> beer out of his ass. Uh, um, we talked about the Anaconda ball pit. Uh, the King Cobra, maybe the, the, one of the other funniest things in this movie is uh they're in like alabama or something and they they have bam doing what he thinks is a stunt called uh the wind tunnel where he's in the back of a cattle trailer 
and they're, they have a giant fan. They're going to blow the fan onto Bam, and he's trying to hang on as long as he can. But the fan blows him into the back of the trailer, and then they run in and they close the horse stall because the real bit is that Bam hates snakes, and they're going to put a goddamn King Cobra in the horse trailer with him. Um, Do you hear what Knoxville says as soon as the co- Cobra's in there? I don't know. I caught it for the first time. I never noticed what he says. So he goes, I'm Bam Margera, and this is the wind tunnel. And then the wind tunnel pushes him back. They run in. They slam the door. As soon as the Cobra gets in and corners Bam, Knoxville starts yelling, okay, cock out, cock out, oh, Bam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, uh, I think because I had the subtitles on. I don't think I'd ever heard that either. And Bam is like, I don't know, because you know, I, uh, I've had this conversation with people before where they're like, I don't like Jackass because they prank people who don't know about it and they're and they prank that's a, uh, uh and they're and they like they prank each other opposed too to people who prank people who don't who know about it right but i was like well if you're in jackass like if you're if you're because mostly they prank each other they do do outside pranks but like if you work on the jackass crew or you're a person who made your <laughs> your name on jackass you have to know that they're gonna fuck with you that's the like every that's the part that's the point the only the only pranking other people that i there's two that i think crossed the line and one one the one that i never liked was uh but it's a very funny prank it's just now that we know about concussions it's not a good idea right when bam would come up behind somebody and he'd have a glass of water in one hand and a and a boxing glove on the other hand, he would throw water in their face and then smash them in the head yeah. as hard as he could. That's very dangerous. Like, that's a really bad one. Um, and then Wee Man peeing on Jeff Tremaine oh. in, I can't remember which that movie that one was. third movie, maybe? That might be in the third movie. Yeah. Jeff Tremaine, it's, this one's funny and more harmless. Like, I don't think Tremaine had a real problem with this one. But yeah. Tremaine's sitting on a rock, and Wee Man pisses on the rock from, like, maybe 15 and 15 feet up away from him and it, it trickles down onto Tremaine's pants, yeah. you know, that's gross. But like this type of stuff, if you're just getting scared, like you're getting paid a bunch of money to be in this movie, you know what you signed up for. Bam's done worse to everybody. Yeah. Uh, they just, they all, it's the social contract, you know? Right. You've entered into a, a plat, like a tacit agreement. <laughs> like you're, you're up for this shit. If you're in, yeah. the, if you're in the group, but Bam is kind of incredulous here. He's like a Cobra dude. <laughs> yeah, you a fucking Cobra dude. Yeah. <laughs> Bam, are you crying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Bam is lucky at this point that he is still fucking rail thin. Cause he jumps through the, the horse trailer, the gap in the top and escapes, but then seems to hit his face on his way. Out. Yeah. But he's like, <laughs> he's explaining his own thought process, which is why it's so funny is he's like, you know, I got here and I'm starting to do my stunt. And I think to myself, why is the fucking snake guy here <laughs> in Alabama? Uh, and then he, they, he's on the top of the, the van that brings everybody everywhere. And they're like, why are you up there? And he goes, uh, cause I don't trust any of you fuckers. And then somebody takes a piece of like lawn hose or something and throws it on his back and he freaks out and jumps off and spills his beer and then goes, uh, all you fuckers are asses, which is <laughs> one of the best lines of all time. See, that's the thing. Like there's, there's multiple things in this movie that I say all the time. Still, yeah. you fuckers are asses. I say all the time. Uh, fucking Christ! <laughs> fucking I say Christ. I say a lot. I wrote I wrote a couple of them down. Hold on, let me find them. Uh, there was uh, sorry. Uh, I say muffed up. Oh yeah, I got a muffed up butt. Muff- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 just a little bit of rattlesnake venom will get you. <laughs> uh, yeah, those are those are the ones that I, I just. There's like five things in this movie that not only am I like. I don't feel like I'm quoting a movie when I say it anymore, right. except for fucking Christ. Every time I say fucking Christ, I think of Ryan Dunn, yeah. but uh, b- just bam running away in his like limp wristed, weird, like magician arms. Yeah. And then uh, this, this one, once again, showcases jackass, like, su- like surprise, unexplained reveal a guy whose name I can't say on this podcast, this old man, oh. uh-huh. they cut to this old man that we've never seen before. I don't know if he's ever been on anything. And he's like, that's the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life. The white boy's afraid of snakes. And then he just looks and goes, hey. And then they just cut the. <laughs> he was just, he's just a dude in Alabama that they found. With an offensive name. <laughs> yeah. I, um, 
Okay, so the one that I don't like in this movie, the one bit that I really don't like, uh, is the switcheroo. And I think it's the You don't like the switcheroo? I think it's funny in principle. I don't like that they're uh, essentially and like P- Preston keeps going. Well, I basically assaulted your mom, and I'm like, oh yeah, I like. I think so. I think the idea is funny. I don't April being unaware of its uh, of it happening. I know is essential to the bit, but it makes it less funny to me. I don't know. Everybody has their line. Yeah. I thought this was I thought this was hilarious. Mm-hmm. The 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 one of the best shots in Jackass history is Phil walking out and him and Preston pointing at each other and shaking hands. Yeah. And, and so basically, everybody mm-hmm. everybody listening, uh, basically, Ape, uh, Bam's parents are asleep and Bam goes in and uh, wakes up his dad and then they walk out and Preston has a fake beard on, a bunch of fake back hair on, and he's wearing his t- tidy whities like film sleeps in, and Preston goes in and lays down with April and. Um, first of all, for, for the record, didn't look like he actually copped a feel. He just, no. he, he just put his giant stomach against her back. <laughs> and so I get why it's a little, but I, I, I think as if, uh, April was obviously cool with it afterwards. She thought it was funny. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, Bam's like, uh, uh, did he feel fatter? And Preston's like, uh, you you can say it. You can say it. Don't worry about it. And and well, Phil's that's like, where he says April, he goes. You can say anything you want. I assaulted you. <laughs> Is what I didn't hear him say that. Yeah, uh, I or I basically he, he, assaulted. You know, like he was. And uh, she was like, uh, he felt shorter. And Phil goes, "You felt that part." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the in two thousand six, I could see it. You know, like it just for me now, it doesn't work as well. You know, and it might be the you were sub- you were you were you were an apologist in 2006. That's weird. <laughs> I've I've kept the same stance. Though. That's true. Yeah, I've I've grown as a person. So yeah, uh, the doorbell. Doorbell's very funny. Uh, it's it's like <laughs> yeah. two seconds, and it also shows another important part of Jackass, which is like so. Dave England, they've got these pneumatic, uh, basically punching bag things that they use to prank everybody throughout the movie. That's a new thing in Jackass 2. I, I don't know who introduced Knoxville to him, but he loves them. Uh, and so Dave England shows up at some mansion and he goes to... I think it's Knoxville's house. It might be Knoxville's house, yeah. He brings the doorbell and this pneumatic, whatever it is, fucking shoots out and hits Dave England right in the face and fucks yeah. his ass up, like, on sight. And he just keeps going... What'd you do to me? What was that? <laughs> the, my favorite part is uh, Knoxville walks out and England is still like on the ground, like half up and his eyes are like all messed up. And he goes, what? Up? <laughs> <laughs> and Knoxville, you can t- like, it's like, there's a medic inside. Let's get you inside. And then he's like, he makes a face about how uh, concerning it kind of is about how fucked up Dave England got. Cause he didn't imagine that that would happen. But like, that to me is also like a key to the jackass thing is yes, they all get hurt. They put themselves in positions to get hurt. They hurt each other, but they care about each other. And so it's like, you don't really want to hurt. You want you don't want to hurt your friend so bad that like he can't, you know, he, he can't understand what happened to him. You're trying to get a laugh out of these things. And it's so, What's, well, the, the, the thing that sucks the worst is it, they did the same shit to danger, Aaron, danger, Aaron, with the with the thing and it made it to like the end of the credits <laughs> yeah yeah steve-o broke his back on a bell cart on a, on a bellhop cart and it was in the in the credit they cut it yeah well, not good enough to make it uh yeah. maybe the most famous scene in the movie the big red rocket uh, i love yeah the idea of the big red rocket uh knoxville's going to the moon <laughs> he's getting on this rocket he's in a, a evil knievel jumpsuit he they built, I don't know who they commissioned to build this rocket, uh, but somebody on the Jackass crew tried to build a rocket and they entrusted this guy to do it. And Knoxville gets on it and they do the countdown. And the first time it goes like half the way up and then explodes. <laughs> and uh, the failure of that, again, is part of the comedy. But then they zoom in and what they, I think Knoxville's explaining. They told him, like, okay, if it doesn't work, some rods might shoot out of the top and some rods might shoot out of the bottom. But nobody thought something would shoot out of the side of it. And he's like, they're showing it. And he goes, 
man, if I'd have been a quarter of the inch to the left, that'd be a picture wrap for old Knoxville. Like uh, a hot metal rod would have shot through his torso if he would have laid on this giant stupid rocket a different way. And he, yeah, and, he's, and it was it was like it was like over a foot long this rod. Yeah, apparently. and he would have been, and he's like he's fine with it. It's it's so bizarre. He that he's just like okay. You know, and one of the stories they tell after is that the one of the rods that shot backwards, like shot between two of the cameramen, and he's like, if that would have hit somebody, that would have decapitated that person. <laughs> and I don't know that that's true necessarily, but it like wouldn't have been great, you know. And well, the the one that went through that went went out that almost hit Knoxville would have done some real damage oh, to him. It was yeah. going so fast when it went out the side. That shit would have. That shit probably would have killed him. Uh, probably would have killed him. Yeah. But he immediately gets up on the rocket for take two <laughs> because yeah. we got it. Yeah. Well, the idea is too good. And I forgot. I, every time I think I forget that they redo the rocket and it's awesome. They were right. Whenever yeah. <laughs> the rocket shoots and Knoxville's in the air, holding on to it before he bails and uh, he doesn't bail soon enough, which is a Johnny Knoxville uh, staple, you know, cause he bails basically and lands right where the rocket is going to land on top of him uh in the water you know uh, oh yeah but he it's great he's well, he okay you can't plan you can't plan for that you gotta hold on to that shit for dear life really? you probably planned on holding it the whole time the but that ruled like that's one of the most satisfying parts of the movie is watching like it's very funny nobody's really hurt uh it, it looks impressive like it hits all the criteria uh, and somebody could have died and somebody could have died uh, the terror taxi, according to Bam Margera, the best skit in the whole movie is the final, it's, they put it at the end. Good. It's the final bit. It's the, it's the greatest prank of all time. <laughs> it's uh, in any uh, done by anybody. There's not a better yeah. prank than the terror taxi. In my opinion, so many layers. Uh, it's got everything. They've got danger, Aaron crabs. <laughs> The tubes. Uh, it's got <laughs> Danger Aaron and Dimitri, one of the cameramen. They are playing two terrorists that Jeff Tremaine is very clear to Danger Aaron are not from any particular country. He's like, yeah. they're, they're, you guys aren't from a particular country. We're not trying to make fun of anybody here. The the fun, the humor is the fact that you're this guy, but we're not. We're it's not uh, specific. So they he has a fake bomb strapped to him. And the idea is he's going to get into a taxi that he calls and have the taxi drive him to the airport. But the whole time he's going to be talking about how he wants to blow up uh, this airplane or whatever. He's going to be alluding to it. Right. Like he, he's like talking about the, his wife's boobs. And then he's like, <laughs> there's an airplane. We are close. Boom. We are very, very close. <laughs> yeah. And the guy, uh, but the real prank, it's a double prank. <laughs> prank on a prank. prank on a prank. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> That Danger Aaron is going to get picked up by Jay uh, Shikandar of the Broken... Chandra Sikar. Chandra, yes. Of, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get it. Jay Chandra Sikar, bro. He's, he's famous. Yeah, I know. Uh, not as famous as... This uh, is five years after Super Troopers, yeah, by the not way. Fa- I'm surprised they tried a guy that was in a movie that would be... That uh, big. Not as famous as Bam, as we'll find out. Uh, <laughs> that part's funny. So, but he's driving the cab, and he's in on it. And that's that's half of it. The other half of the prank is that they all shaved pubic hair off of themselves and had it turned into the spirit, like the the movie uh, hair that he thinks is getting put on him as part of the bit. So he doesn't know. Yeah, his his beard is everybody's pubes, including like Matt Hoffman and Ville Valo, the singer for him. <laughs> And the, you know Bam had to sneak Ville Valo into this movie yeah, somehow. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a couple of hardograms in this movie, too. Um, oh, all over the place, yeah. yeah. But, uh, and I assume the woman who put the beard on was aware, right? She's wearing gloves, yeah. but I, I assume yeah, that yeah. she's in on it, too. Um, yeah. And it's it's like so, it's, it's one of those things where it's almost the murder mystery. Uh, the joy of the murder mystery is if you know who did the murder... And then you're watching somebody who doesn't know what's happened and you're watching them try to figure it out. And you're like, Oh man, you're like, you're so close. And, uh, the, you, the audience know what the character in the movie doesn't know. And so, well, Aaron, 
Aaron commits to the bit so hard, and he he probably thinks because when when Bam says, "Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the best skit in this movie." Aaron's standing right there. Aaron thinks that he's getting right. the 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 finale prank. Like he he this was his big moment, and he commits to it. And him committing to it is funny because you know that he's he's getting screwed. Yeah. And then when as soon as so they're in the taxi ride and Aaron's like doing his jokes and he's doing a good job and like he's being he's being subtle enough while still being kind of obvious for the viewer at least and and Jay Trondra Seacar is being amazing like he is he is being a perfect straight man but being a little tough on him and then as soon as they pass the airport like the, the he's yelling at him he's like where are we going where are we going and they turn down an alley and as soon very as bad. Jay tur- very bad yeah, yeah very bad and then as soon as jay turns around and starts trying to hit him uh aaron's uh, accent goes away asshole asshole yeah. stop asshole and then he opens his jacket and he's all boom <laughs> boom i've got a bomb no i've got a fucking bomb dude <laughs> well that's it's after he, yeah that's uh, after yeah. That's after once he once he throws him on the ground, he's like, "I've got a fucking bomb, dude." Yeah, and like you said, yeah, he's lost all illusion of being this person, right? But even before that, whenever they're putting the the pube beard on him, and he's yeah. like, uh, he's got it in his mouth, and you as the viewer uh, yeah. are like, "Oh God, damn it, man! Like, wh- why?" And he goes, "It feels like I'm chewing on pubes here." And then they're yeah. they're zooming in on the part of his teeth where he has no tooth and it's just like all up in there there's just so it, many pubes in his mouth yeah and it's just like oh man man is that gross and then yeah they, it ends up that jay has a gun and now he's turned it on the terrorists and he's like telling them to get on the ground and dimitri is really selling this thing because i i assume dimitri's in on it too yeah, he right. knows. And so every everybody but Aaron everybody knows. but Aaron. Right. And he's trying to tell Aaron, like, lay down, dude. He's, the dude's got a fucking gun. Like, lay down, do what he says. And then Well, and he does a brilliant job of Dimitri la- lays on his stomach with the camera pointed at Aaron yeah. without making it obvious that he's still filming Aaron. Yeah. Like it's 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 great. And then uh that he t- uh Jay tells Aaron to get in the trunk. And then uh, he he forces Aaron in the trunk and closes it. And right then, Bam comes running over. And it's like Bam and a few of the other jackass guys, and they're yelling at Jay, and they're like, it's a movie, we're doing a skit, uh, et cetera. And the best line in the movie is Aaron from inside the trunk going, that's Bam Margera, asshole, he's famous. <laughs> yeah. uh, he, the da- the way that Danger Aaron cusses everybody out, like the whole, it's when he, when they're putting him in the trunk, he looks at the van and he goes, he's got a fucking gun pointed at me, dude, asshole, fuck face, cocksucker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, he just yeah. can't stop cussing. He's pleading at the van to like intercede on his behalf and tell this dude that it's a bit. And yeah. so then like uh, they pretend that Jay starts shooting at the jackass guys and then Jay gets in the car and starts driving in a circle in the van and the whole time aaron's just in the trunk going fuck 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 i'm gonna fucking yeah. die uh and then they stop the why did i agree to this yeah. this wasn't even my fucking idea <laughs> he they stop the taxi and they open the trunk from the inside of the car and there's just a second where like you could tell aaron's like what the fuck is going on and then he yeah. and then he opens it and the relief and the anger like I, I truly yeah. relate to this idea of like he's so happy that it's not real, but he's so mad <laughs> that his yeah. that his friends would do this to him. Uh, and then he he goes over to Jay and he goes, "Oh man, what are you? Some kind of actor or something?" And Jay's reaction of "Come on" <laughs> is yeah. one of the funniest things in this movie. Uh, yeah, it's great. It's great. Yeah, uh, by the way, we skipped over what I think is the funniest part of this movie. I just realized, but oh, no. uh, we'll th- go back. this, this, yeah, we'll go back. It's very quick. Uh, this is, this is the greatest prank ever. It is, it, 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 and it couldn't have gone more perfectly. And then they show, they tell him about the pubes, and he starts throwing up. Yeah. And then they cut to him, and he's pulling the pubes off his face. Still, and he goes, seriously, guys, was the dick hair necessary? <laughs> And he goes, before before they tell him that it's the pubes, he's standing there and he goes, no, 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 I get it. It's a prank on a prank. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, and then they tell him about it. He's like, this shit was in my mouth. <laughs> and they all pull down like the, the, 
their pants a little bit to show that they all shaved to be a part of it. Like it really is like, it's so mean, uh, and it, but it's so in keeping with the spirit of Jackass and it worked because danger. Aaron is the guy that in that Jackass crew is the one that you could do it to like Knoxville. Yeah. They... Uh, Knoxville wouldn't believe it. Bam. And those dudes wouldn't believe it, but ain't danger. Aaron, he's lovable, but you can dupe him, you know? And that's really where the comedy from his side comes from. It feels like he was the perfect guy to do it to a hundred percent. Um, real quick, let's get back the horse semen. Um, oh yes. I forgot about this. The, uh, the old switcheroo, the old switcheroo. So they, they, this part, I've never laughed harder. Um, than Pontius's line, but they say that they, the way that they are artificially inseminate a horse is they have a male horse and then a female horse and the, the male horse mounts the female horse. You slide in like a, like a sleeve that is a fake horse vagina. And then the, obviously what happens happens. And, um, uh, once again, the, the power of surprise, they, they cut straight to the horse and the horse is running and he's got the biggest wiener I've ever seen. And it's just swinging back and forth. And then, uh, they, they're like, is it okay to drink? And he's like, I think he says, tocar. I, yeah. I can't remember if that's how you say drink. He's like, no problem. I think they were <laughs> so, in Argentina. Cause some of the so, Argentina. Uh, so, so, uh, Pontius is like, if I do this, this gives me an out for something gnarly down the road. And they shake his hand. And then so he drinks it and he just, he can't get the line out. He keeps going, that's similar. That's, and he's like, try to puke. I'm not going to retch into the microphone. And then he just, he finally compo- gets his composure and says, that's semen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Knoxville's like, I never puke. I, I nearly puked at this, you know? And yeah. the idea, one of the funnier things, and maybe not funny to everyone. Like it's funny to imagine what hits different people as, as things that are funny. But like one of the things that's funny about this skit to me is that in Pontius's mind, this gets him out of something he'd rather not do. He would rather oh, do yeah. this <laughs> than some other thing. And when you watch a lot of the skits, Pontius isn't doing the physical, like he he's not getting hurt a lot. Like he's not in the skateboarding scenes or the scenes with the rocket cars and all that stuff. Uh, it's more. He did do. He did do uh, uh, medicine ball tag in the dark. Oh yeah, <laughs> or medicine ball which dodge probably ball wasn't dark. a fun. Uh, that seemed like that sucked ass. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, but generally he's like in the stuff with the animals, or he's doing party boy, or he's doing like. I wonder yeah. if one of the things is like he doesn't want it. <laughs> I'm not trying to get fucked up making this movie. Uh, he's funny yeah. enough that he doesn't need to. Yeah, he's, he's one of the funniest human beings on the planet. So apparently, uh, in the Wikipedia for this, they said that Pontius originally wanted a full day off of work in exchange for drinking the horse semen. Uh, yeah. But he had previously taken the day off the day before. And so they were like, <laughs> no, uh, you, you can't have a day off. And so then that's why on camera, he made Tremaine uh, shake his hand that this would get him out of something. He could opt out of something else that he didn't want to do. Uh, Cause yeah. a lot of it, if you watch the jackass behind the scenes things is like, I, I don't want to say like they trick these guys into doing this stuff or force them into doing it, but there is a lot of coaxing of like, or, of or like negotiating for a lot yeah. of the stuff, which makes sense. Uh, Cause none of it's <laughs> like fun to do probably to a certain degree. Um, then the, so the end is, and the end of all of these movies are sort of, I think this is where Knoxville's influence really comes in is they do a big, like musical number finale um, that is in the style of like old movies, you know, they yeah. like they do the old Western or they do a sort of Buster Keaton kind of takeoff. Um, and like you said, everybody gets, uh, that's one of the things that they do really well too, is everybody gets a minute of like their own shot where they're doing their own thing or they're coupled with the person that they're mostly known for. But like everybody gets a second to shine. And then of course, Knoxville gets the big thing at the end, which is the old Buster Keaton standing there while the house falls. Uh, and he's, and it falls through, through him basically. Cause he's standing where the window is, which is, yeah. there's a, there's a hole in the, in the set yeah. and uh, it falls and it falls like right over him and he doesn't move, which is awesome. 
like which is an awesome stunt and really cool yeah. and apparently they warned knoxville not to really fuck around with that because uh the house the the prop is made of steel and would have really fucked him up and then you see where he can't judge either he can't judge where the where the window is and he starts freaking out in the credits and it lands on him or he wanted it to land on him at one point he just moved yeah, yeah. i don't know he just moved because you don't have to judge shit there's an x on the ground <laughs> right but it, that if you stand there you're fine and then he moved and got flattened yeah um <laughs> And the like, there's nothing really crazy. Like uh, Bam and and Dunn get pulled by horses, which probably sucked. Uh, the gnarliest one's probably Preston Lacey on the giant slide. Yeah, the first the- water based lubricants, <laughs> friend or foe. Yeah, the first part is uh, Wee Man with Brian Preston laying down. Wee Man lays on top of his back, and they slide down a big slide into some like barrels. Uh, who's B- B- Preston Lacey? Who's Brian Preston? Oh, I'm sorry, Preston Lacey. I don't know. Think of Br- you, were you, th- yeah. you might have been thinking Billy Preston. Yeah, or Brian or Brian Nobbs of the Nasty Boys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> also, guys who could have been been influenced by Jackass. Preston, Jerry Sags, yeah. <laughs> and Brian Nobbs <laughs> are the Nasty Boys. And the Boys. public enemy is Rocco Rock and Johnny Grunge. That is right. <laughs> Look at you. It's been a while since uh-huh. I've had to do that it's one. St- it's stuck around. Um, yeah. And then they have Rip Taylor at the end, just like in the first movie, because they always bring Rip Taylor back in. Uh, Very funny. That's the movie. And then during the credits, they show Preston wiping out like pretty hard. Uh, oh, yeah. And that's where Pontius gets the line, water-based lubricants, friend or foe, which is one of the funnier things that you can, uh, that like is said in this movie. And like you said, Pontius is like, He's just so funny, and he has a captivating screen presence, you know. And I think that he's for all a, these guys, a, that's true. He's just got a unique brain. Like he's yeah. a he's a weird guy. Um, but did you do your uh, metrics for this one? Your rankings? I did do them. Yes. Okay. So did I. Uh, um. So what do you think watching this time? You know, I, like, I it still makes me laugh. Like there are yeah. still things about it that make me laugh. I think Jackass, there's there's definitely a high rewatchability, Ugh. even if you know the bits. But it does kind of suffer from like you do know the the bits, um, yeah. And it's and because it's not a movie, you can't get lost or not not a movie, but like narratively, there's no structure. You can't get lost in a story again. So it is really just like how well do the bits hold up? And turns out bits hold up pretty great pretty good it is a bit of a time capsule it's never going to be as funny as it was in 2006 right. uh people who didn't experience 2006 are, are probably not going to understand it as much a lot of the things are universal a guy getting kicked in the nuts is always funny right. but um the 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 fact that this was such a phenomenon is going to be lost on a lot of people i texted my girlfriend uh before this and i said when you think of uh jackass what comes to mind and she gave me a she gave me a list she went above and beyond on this one uh middle school boys <laughs> monster energy drinks skater boys with a z the midget guy pissed off moms tattoos volcom backwards hats and explosives she's not wrong I think it works pretty well yeah. yeah i said that's perfect thank you very much that's it, it is a very specific sect of things so this is when we say that we're putting everything up against Jackass, we know that Jackass isn't a universal thing. Like my dad's going to think certain things in Jackass are funny, but he's not going to think Jackass is as funny as I do. Uh, almost no woman on the planet is going to think Jackass is as funny as I do. And that's okay. Yep. I understand. No, a lot of women don't want to see danger Aaron pooping onto a little tiny toilet. And then neither do I, yep. frankly, most of the time. And Preston Lacey pooping into the fart mask <laughs> with, with Steve-O puking inside of it. Right. Um, So, um, yeah, it is, it's a time capsule. I don't have it high on the rewatchability simply because, because I would rewatch this movie, but most people, because a lot of the appeal is in the first time you see these stunts when you don't see it coming. Um, the, I've, I've never, ever like the, the, the people in the theater when I watched this were howling the theater. When I watched Jackass forever, the theater literally caught on fire <laughs> and they had to evacuate the room. We were all sitting there and we were like, you smell that? And like everybody got up and left because it smelled like an electrical fire. Yeah. Do you think we didn't go back into that room the <laughs> second they told us that we could to watch the rest of that yeah. movie? 
uh we waited like, in the hallway does jackass do smell a vision now is that part of the yeah, yeah it was dude it was it was a little scary yeah. but uh so um i i'll i'll start with we'll go, we'll we'll go in the order well we'll go with for, we'll start with gax okay this movie's a 10 in gax <laughs> it's, yeah it's all uh yeah it's all gags so it's got to be uh it's got to be a 10 because again like the thing that that jackass is winning at is that they don't have to write a movie where they have to work all of these gags into where they make sense in a narrative they just get to do gags everything's a gag yeah. so it's 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 there's there's never been a movie with better gags yeah so it's got to be a 10 in gags um jokes I put a three and a half for jokes. Okay. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to change it to a four. We got four in jokes it's just simply because there's not a whole lot of jokes, right? There are, there are Chris Pontius. If, if you want to go by jokes, Chris Pontius, Chris Pontius and Phil Margera <laughs> carry this movie. Went, in jokes. went on jokes. Uh, Knoxville has some good ones. Like when they do the bicentennial bicycling and he, he gets fucked up running his bicycle into the mound of snow and he yeah. uh, he goes yeah my head stopped my body from getting really hurt on that one <laughs> that's yeah uh, and uh ryan dunn this is so stupid why wouldn't they just make two different two the same size wheels <laughs> yeah. like i think because the the some of the appeal is that it's all improvised uh or you know for the majority of it is improvised and reactions yeah, uh, you do get a lot of funny stuff, but there aren't a lot of like setup, punchline kind of things. Is it wrong to be strong? Is a joke that's written it's a for joke. the movie, and it, they they get they get they definitely <laughs> get uh, credit for. Is it wrong to be strong? Yeah. I just think it's not very joke dense. No. If you put this up against Dumb and Dumber or the Forty Year Old Virgin or yeah. any of those, there's jokes in this movie that stand the test of time against those jokes. Like are as funny as the jokes in the other movie. But there's just not as many jokes because this is a entirely a gag movie. Yeah. So like, oh, Pawnee is uh, saying uh, in the Anaconda ball pit, you got to get those anacondas because they tried to kill J Lo and Ice Cube. Uh, it's a great line. Yeah. So it's a great line. Uh, yeah, I'll go three on jokes if we're talking about you know a traditional setup sort of idea okay. for jokes. Okay, uh, story zero, obviously. Yeah, there's there's no story in this movie. Uh, Rewatchability, I put four and a half. I'm going to go with a six. Because I think, okay. like, this will not be the last time that I ever watch Jackass 2. Uh, because no, me neither. It, com- me neither. it comes back around. Like, after a few years, on some Saturday or some rainy day or some, <laughs> some day I don't have bullshit to do, I might just go, you know, it'd be really funny to watch all, to watch all the Jackass movies again. And I'll go back and I'll rewatch them. Cause like yeah. the, the other thing is there is an ease of watch, like not to be redundant or repeat myself, but it's like, it's like a moving train where it's like, okay, I don't care about the poop thing, but in 30 seconds, they might do the bit where they have Ryan Dunn in the shopping cart and he gets slammed into the, <laughs> that wall. That's very, funny. that's very funny. And like, this is the perfect movie for me to watch. Like when I'm on a tread, like if I'm on a treadmill or something, I can't watch it at the gym because there's too much male nudity, but like at home, I just put it on and you completely get lost in the thing. Cause everything's happening so fast, you know, there is, yeah. Yeah, and you don't have to follow a story and you don't have to follow character and you don't have to know like they it's, it's kind of what, uh, Twitch or not Twitch. What was, or vine sort of like vine was where it's just the, the, the entirety of this thing lives in a minute. You know what? The longest jackass bit might be the terror taxi, you know? Yeah. That one's like 15 minutes. Long right. And it, like and it pays off entirely, but I will rewatch this movie. I'll rewatch all of them again. Cause they uh, they just make me laugh. Yeah. And this is the most, this is the one I've watched the most times. Yeah. Um, performances. I gave pretty high marks for performances on this one. You want to go first? Yeah, I think I got to go an eight on performances. Like everybody's bringing it uh, in this movie. There's just like some of the characters and their bits I care for less than other people in the movie. But I can't uh, I can't claim that anybody in this movie is like (laughs) phoning it in for sure. Yeah, I went with a nine. Yeah. 
Uh, I just, it's just, we got to give these guys credit for the things that they were willing to do. Uh, the acting when they had to act was good. Uh, even Aaron wasn't a bad, wasn't a horrible actor. Jay yeah. Chandra C. Carr should have won an Oscar. Like, <laughs> um, MVP. Oh man. Uh, it's gotta be Johnny Knoxville. Like I love everybody Johnny else Johnny that's Knoxville. in these movies. Um, and I think that they all would have probably found some level of success, but like this thing continues and lives and breathes because of Knoxville and all the other jackass guys say it too. Like he's the general of the, of the crew. He, he's the glue. He's the glue. Yeah. He truly and, is. Uh, so, and, and he's the gnarliest. I mean, there's a shot in the uh, credits. Oh, sorry. You oh, no. Froze, so I didn't know you were talking. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Uh, there's a shot in the credits where Knoxville is jumping over a uh, a uh, toll, like a, what are those things called? When, yeah, the toll. You have to, um, it's not toll. What's the what's meter? The, the parking meter, meter. A parking yeah. meter. And uh, he, he, he sacks it real hard on the parking meter and gets a giant bruise. And uh, apparently that's like literally they had, they were done shooting and he wanted to go out and get more footage. Yeah. Like they were done. And then he tried to jump over a parking meter and almost killed himself. Well, like the, the way that this movie came about from everything that I've read and heard is that uh, Knoxville was on some episodes of the wild boys, which Tremaine, Jeff Tremaine also uh, produced and they were yeah. doing some like gnarly stuff. And Tremaine came to Knoxville and was like, if we're going to go this hard, we might as well make a second movie. Like yeah. we might as well do the production value and do it up. Cause like the thing with the horse was from wild boys, but they put it in the movie in Jackass two. Um, okay. And whenever they were done shooting, uh, Knoxville would just go out with a cameraman and just film stuff by himself because he was com so, so committed to this idea of getting footage and he was so worried that the movie was, wasn't going to work, the, that yeah. the second one wasn't going to work. So, it, like, and he didn't want to lose the... It's like going to summer camp, you know, like or a church camp or something. Like, you ever go to one of the camps where you're, like, gone for, like, three or four days? Uh, I just went to Psycon. That's about it. Like when you get back, you miss the the camp thing because like everybody's together, and you have like where we used to go to youth conventions, and like that was oh, a time yeah. when we yeah, all yeah. hung out together for like three or four days, and you're just with that group of people, and it's like a really uh, intense bonding situation, and then it's like then it's over, and you want that particular feeling back and knoxville was saying like he didn't want the filming to end because he wanted to hang out with his friends more you know and it, like, yeah so it, he has to be the mvp like uh, the whole yeah, the whole thing can't. runs through him yeah you can't give it to anybody else um what's the last one favorite moment uh my <laughs> my favorite moment in the in the movie i don't know it's a i it might be whenever bam after they do the brand when bam says i'd rather rip my dick off and throw it in the river than do that again uh yeah. that that's one of the funnier lines uh ever put down to film uh and it's <laughs> and it's so genuine like it's yeah. it comes from a place of realness like that makes me laugh every single time i watch this movie yeah, I think mine is that semen. All right, <laughs> I can't get over that right. joke. The, my whole it's my so favorite good. thing might be the the brand, the entirety of that sketch might be my yeah. favorite part of the movie. Um, okay, because there's a part where where April is yelling at Ryan Dunn about uh, why he should, why he didn't do it better. And he's like, I don't know. I was burning my friend. <laughs> he's like yeah. trying to uh, logically explain something that has no logic to it like she's like you're gonna have that for life and bam goes no shit yeah <laughs> uh dick farm done over here yeah. yeah um so yeah i i think it holds up i think it's very funny i think it's the best version of this thing that you could put out i don't know that there's any crew of people funnier like you always say like even if you got like I have, fun, I have very funny friends. I think we're funny. I think we could put a crew of funny people together. 
and we could come up with creative stuff. Uh, I don't know that anybody, any group of people could be funnier than the dudes that are in Jackass doing the Jackass things together. This group was total lightning in a bottle. Yeah. It was total lightning in a bottle. So, Dusty. Yes. You texted me the other day. I did. And uh, we haven't done one of these in a while. The old texturino. We don't talk anymore. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> only for hours on a po- on a weekly podcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see. I'm trying to find the actual text. I have something to share. Friday, we were gonna we were gonna record this on Friday. You said I injured myself. I am fine in parentheses. Thank you for yeah doing that. Um, but it was in a very dusty way. It's true. Did you fall in a bush again? I did not fall in a bush this time. Um. I really wish you would have. Uh, yeah. Gosh. Um, I own a home. Not a big deal. Uh, Good for you. But it is a smallish home, a modest home. You know, I don't need much. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we have a day bed, sort of set up, uh, for like naps or if we have company or any number of things or whatever. Um, next to the day bed. Day bed. <laughs> oh. yeah. uh, <laughs> next to the day bed is the treadmill because uh, the treadmill is that's the hardest thing to find space for in every, any living situation we have now uh, is where to put the goddamn treadmill because it takes up a yeah. lot of space. Uh, I was. Si- I'll tell you where to put it. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting. I'm. I was sitting on the day bed. Uh, and i was like all right well it's time to get ready for actual bed right but i had been looking at my phone and i was sitting night bed night night bed yeah uh the the classic night bed Uh, i had been sitting but i was looking at my phone and i go to get up and i get up with the full force of someone that is getting up i engage my quads i engage my glutes i spring up and run my head right into the goddamn arm of the treadmill <laughs> just <laughs> bo- boom uh, full <laughs> force that's amazing right into it and i immediately <laughs> ah! <laughs> and i fall back down and sarah comes running over and she's like are you okay? oh no and i was like head's bleeding isn't it busted my head <laughs> straight up busted my head open didn't i and she's like yeah you got you got color i got color it was a main event baby i got i don't you can't really see it but right there i can't really see it i see a little bit a little bit of a shadow uh, um and i'm like how much i like god damn it dude like <laughs> do i have to go get like do how how bad how bad am i bleeding because i can't tell immediately right so I go and I look and I'm like, okay, this is like, I mean, it's not no, it's not no blood, certainly. Yeah. Um, but I don't think this is like a serious sort of situation. So I put a, like a bandaid on it. Part one of the worst things is that like being bald, uh, like if you have a, a head injury, you can't hide it at all. And nowhere, like, there's nowhere on your face or your head where a Band-Aid doesn't look stupid. Uh, Like, whether you cut your head shaving or you cut it (laughs) some other way or something, it always looks stupid. So, put that on to go to sleep. I'm like, all right, everything should be good. Get up the next morning. uh, The Band-Aid soaked in blood. And I'm like, all right, well, (laughs) that's probably not great. There's a lot of blood vessels up yeah. there. I heard that from from JR. Um, so I take it off and I like wash and I'm looking and I'm still like this like this doesn't need stitches. Like it's not yeah. whatever. It's just like bleeding. And so had to put another band-aid on, wore a hat all day. Uh now it's sort of scabbing over, so it's fine. But I when I tell you that like I couldn't have hit this thing any harder with my face or my head. I'm being serious. Like I, yeah, I stood up with the confidence of a man that had nothing in the way of him. No impediments. No impediments. Yeah. Like, have you ever been getting out of your, or like you've been cleaning your car, or you're leaned over into your car and you go to move to get out of the car and you hit your head on the roof 
or like the edge of the um i've done that on a on a golf cart i've done that. i've done that so many times on golf yeah carts. and you're like you're you're i don't know why you feel the need to whip your head out of there you know like with full force but just right just kaboinged right into it uh god i wish i had the video and sarah thought that i had slipped and ran head first <laughs> into the treadmill which was also possible but like that wouldn't have been as bad because I would have, I could have been able to like brace for it or whatever. This was just, I'm, I'm full on action. I'm ready to go, uh, right into it. I'm so glad you told me about that. Yeah. I'm not glad it happened, right? Particularly, that's that's why I gave you the parenthetical that I was fine, uh, because again, it's funny as long as you're fine, you know. Yeah. Uh, By the way, look at this. Yeah, it's too goddamn hot. <laughs> I, I just showed Dusty my phone. It's 114 degrees outside. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot. That's, that's way more than I want it to be. Uh, it's too many degrees. Yeah. Uh, oh, ju- just to circle back briefly, we had talked about uh, the the budgets and the grosses of the Jackass movie, so I just want to get that out of the way. Um, the original Jackass movie, the budget was $5 million. Okay. It made seventy nine and a half million dollars. Big, I'd say that's a success. <laughs> big ass hit. Uh, yeah, and and this was when also why they made the movie because nobody was getting paid off of the TV show. Did you know the TV show only has twenty five episodes, something like that? I knew it was short. I didn't know it was that little. It's like it's crazy how long this thing has gone, given uh, like the initial impact of it. You know. But it was such a phenomenon. Uh, Second movie, you were right. They essentially doubled the budget. $11.5 million. It's the budget of Jackass 2. But... And that that means these guys were underpaid. (laughs) It still means they were underpaid. Uh, Box office, $84.6 million. So the box office did go up. Not a substantial amount, but still a big-ass hit. Uh, oh, yeah. for for Paramount. Uh, and I think Bam, like, this was the point where Knoxville's got, like, real actor money that he's getting from things. Um, and the, Bam was selling every single skateboard humanly possible, you know, so he, like, he's he he made a ton of money off of uh, Heart of Graham skateboards or whatever it was. Bam still has a lot of money. Yeah. Like, Bam 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 made a lot of money off of Viva La Bam. Viva La Bam, you have your own TV, MTV show that's that big? Like, Bam made a lot of money. Off. They had, his budget per episode was unbelievable. Yeah, I, it was, Viva what, Bam. like $360,000 an episode or something? Three, I can't $300, remember. $300,000 an episode. So, like, the, he, he talked about in an interview, like, having to come up with ways to spend that money uh to spend that production budget so the week jackass 2 came out this is a dog shit uh week of movies (laughs) for uh jackass is number one 29 million dollars which is sort of indicative of jackass like it made a third of its gross the opening weekend because everybody who loves jackass is going to go see jackass I snuck into Jackass too. I I wonder what movie I said I was watching. Uh, could have been Fearless, the Jet Li film. No, definitely was not that. Gridiron Gang with The Rock, which was number one the previous week. Could have been that. Uh, Fly Boys, World War Two airplane movie. Hmm. Uh, Everybody's Hero, animated baseball movie. Kids got to get Babe Ruth's bat back to him before the World Series. I was 16, so I was going to say I'm surprised I don't know about that one, but no, I don't remember that one. Uh, The Black Dahlia, one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, Brian De Palma made this movie about the real Black Dahlia murder that's never been solved, and guess what? They don't solve it. Movie ends? No idea who killed that woman. (laughs) Hell yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I don't know what I expected the movie to do, but I expected it to do something. It did nothing. Maybe we'll find out. (laughs) Uh, All the King's Men, which I don't even know what that is. The Illusionist, the Edward Norton magician movie. A movie called... The... All the King's Men isn't a Humpty Dumpty movie? Uh, t- possibly. About the failure. Preceded, 
preceded by all the king's horses. Yeah. Uh, this is its opening week, and it opened at number seven to three million dollars. Eat it, all the king's men. It's a Sean Penn vehicle. Oh, I think I do know this movie, or I've, I've at least seen the DVD cover. But uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, number nine, The Covenant, werewolves, teenage, <laughs> teenage werewolves. God damn, All the King's Men has quite a fucking cast. Sean Penn, Jude Law, Kate Winslet, James Gandolfini, Mark Ruffalo, and Anthony Hopkins. Those are some heavy hitters. Accounted for $3 million at the box office. Yeah, the budget was nine, was, uh, <laughs> God damn, the budget was $55 million, and the box office is $9.5 million. <laughs> Should have given that money to Jackass. <laughs> Flopperino. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and number 10, Little Miss Sunshine, which is a, which is a movie I actually do like. Great movie. Uh, Great movie yeah. Number 11, Invincible. You seen fucking Invincible? I have not seen Invincible. No. But he I joins the Eagles, bro. The fucking Just a man on the street. Son of a bitch. They should have put me on the <laughs> Uh The Last Kiss, which is a movie with... Uh... Oh, fuck. Who's in that movie? The guy from Scrubs. Zach Braff. Zen Mullet. Zach Braff, yeah. dude. And then Hollywood Land, which is another flop with uh, Ben Affleck about the murder of George Reeves, the original Superman uh, from the TV show. Stinks. This box office stinks. Uh, yeah, th- there's a weird time, man. Yeah. <laughs> there's no there's no goddamn Iron Man, I'll tell you, I'll tell you that. Well, we, I'm glad we about needed that. A, nope, we needed Iron Man. The, uh, no, we, all we needed was Jackass. At this moment. So, yeah, we got Jackass in the tank as our control uh, for <laughs> for all the other movies that we're doing. We are for sure doing, uh, in the coming weeks, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, Tropic Thunder, which I'm exceedingly excited about, and uh, Dumb and Dumber. And then, fourth movie, the classic TBD. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll let you know. We're we're we we very much are not sure. I'm I'm leaning in a certain direction, but we got to see what's going on. Yeah. So, um, you want to do a quick the dozen and get out? Let's of here? do it. So the dozen daily trivia is made by Barstool Sports. It is uh, comprised of nine questions. Three are always about sports, and the rest are general American culture. Um, sometimes we do pretty well at these. Sometimes we're terrible. So yeah. we'll see how it goes. I've been doing terrible recently. <laughs> I haven't been trying, yeah. so uh, let's go with NFL. This wide receiver currently has an active streak of six straight 1,000-plus receiving yard seasons, beginning with Minnesota in 2018 and 2019. I believe... Stephon Diggs? Yeah, I would. I think that's Stephon Diggs. Can you... Look at us. Can you Stephon dig it? You know? Look at us. Uh, Aaron Boone had 86 home runs for this NL team from 1997 to 2003 before getting traded to the Yankees midseason and hitting his famous ALCS walk-off dinger. Do you know who this is? I do not. It's the Cincinnati Red Stockings. Okay. I I d- uh, so that home run, I was it was on a Thursday, and I was going to watch SmackDown, and I was like, well, I should see about the end of this baseball game. And I just got home from youth group just in time to see Aaron Boone hit that home run. Great time. God damn. I watched, I watched every out of that game. And when he hit it, I ran into my mom's room. She's asleep and I yelled, Aaron Boone! <laughs> and then I ran back into the, Aaron Boone. Back into the living room. <clears throat> Just like his dad, Gary Payton II, attended this Pac-12 school from 2014 to 2016, where he won the Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year twice. Arizona? Sure. I was going to say, isn't the Pac-12 the Pac like around where we live, right? I don't fuck. Yeah. Know, dude. <laughs> Arizona or Arizona State? Which one? Let's go Arizona. We were wrong. Right. Uh, cool. History. <laughs> a Pennsylvania senator from 1995 to 2007, this politician narrowly won the Iowa caucus but finished runner-up to Mitt Romney for the 2012 Republican nomination. Who was around? It's not like Rand Paul. No. it's. I don't think it's Ron Paul. It's not John. Could it be Ron Paul? Maybe. It's not John McCain, right? No, he's an Arizona senator. And John Kerry was a Democrat, I think. Let's go, Ron Paul. I think we're going to be. Yeah. If if it's not Ron Paul, I think we're going to be pissed. He's not even an option. <laughs> uh, the Ron Paul. It's not Howard Dean. He's a. Was he a Democrat? 
Yeah. Well, he didn't even he he dropped out. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Mitt Romney. He finished Mitt. Mitt he finished Mitt runner up to Mitt. Romney. Oh no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably not. That's probably why Mitt Romney's name was in my head. I don't know. Right, let's go. Let's go celebrity yeah. mashup. We're, 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 oh, good. Okay, there we go. Oh. Uh, that is Rob Lowe and... That's Gl- very... Glenn Close. Glenn Close, yeah. yeah. Glenn Close but no Rob cigar Lowe. is what that is. Glenn Close. Nailed that one. Um, <laughs> beverages. With his logo being its name in black print behind a yellow background. Behind a yellow background. So it's hidden. <laughs> oh, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. This, this brand known for soda water, ginger ale, and lemonade originates out of Geneva and was introduced in 1783. Uh, here's a spoiler alert for you. I don't really like ginger ale, so I don't know the names of ginger ales. I like ginger ale, but I don't know. I think there's like one that starts with SCH. Schweppes. Okay. Look at me. Look at me. What? Holy shit. Impossible. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, television originally debuting on Fox Kids in 1993, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot were the main characters of this animated musical comedy series. That is the uh, the Animaniacs. They had pay to play contracts. They had baloney in their slacks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, critically panned as a commercial failure, this this winner and runner up of American Idol season one starred in this 2003. The winner and rubber. Oh, the winner and runner-up of American Idol season one started in this 2003 musical romantic comedy. What is this movie called? That it, from Justin from to Justin Kelly. Justin to Kelly. Yeah. <clears throat> Music. No, most known for a 2000 song "Love Song." This singer also had hits in the 2010s with "Brave" and "I Choose You." Oh, is it Sarah Bareilles? I was going to say, isn't it Sarah Bareilles? Isn't that Sarah Bareilles. Yep. All right. Uh, who's the Pennsylvania senator? <laughs> Dude, there's like, there's no way for me. I know, but I'm going to be pissed when yeah. I don't get this right. It's not like Herman Cain. Well, I don't think, but I'm going to try Herman Cain. All right. I, I lean on you in this situation. Herman Cain, not option. option. <laughs> uh, what was that one guy who was the Speaker of the House? Paul uh... F. Tompkins? No, fuck. He was like a young guy. Paul Buttigieg. No, 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 no. Let's let's give real answers. No, because that's Pete. Okay. Oh. Well. <laughs> and he's a gay Democrat. I don't know. Uh, just guys, man. Uh, Ryan, Paul Ryan. Okay. And I it didn't tell me if I was right or, or not. I was wrong about Paul Ryan. College basketball. We're gonna try Arizona State for Gary Payton. Okay. Also wrong. All right. All right. Who? 14% on this history question, by the way. Nobody knows. That's. Rick Santorum. Ah. Remember him? Now that you say it, I do. Um, Yeah. Uh, College basketball, Gary Payton went to Oregon State. Great. (laughs) I'm happy. Yeah. We got got seven out of nine. uh, Yeah. I feel like anybody uh, who could do better, I'd like to see it. Uh, Who got Schweppes? You know what I mean? Also. Were you aware that while Wacko packs away the snacks, Bill Clinton plays the sax for the Animaniacs? You looked up. You looked up. You looked up. The lyrics I did look up the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah, I saw you looking at your yeah. phone. <laughs> That's why I couldn't think of any uh, politicians because I needed to put a button on this Animaniacs. Cur- uh, uh, joke. I loved that show. I don't remember really anything about it. It, it holds uh, up pretty well, man. Uh, like it's very funny. It's, I'll take your word for it. It's dog. zany. You know what I mean. Yeah, my mom loved it. I loved yeah. it. It was fun. Uh, but that has been smart, Snark Marks, everybody. Dusty, you want to sign them off? Uh, yeah, thank you to everybody who listens. We are truly sorry about last week. Uh, we tried everything within our power to release an episode, but it wouldn't uh, happen. The fates did not want Joe Dirt episode to be heard. So uh, thanks for sticking around. We tr- have really tried not to uh, not put out an episode. Uh, in the time that we've been doing this. Uh, thanks for hanging around. Uh, interact with us on the socials. You know, hit uh, the like button or the subscribe button for Andrew. He really wants you to. He took the sunglasses off, but don't take that to mean that he doesn't. Yeah, I was getting nauseous. Yeah, don't take that as a to mean that he does not want you to. Uh, and, of course, next week the snark, the snark Marks will be back because we also have pay-to-play contracts. 
That is true. Yeah. And baloney in our true. sex. I, I, I pay Dusty in band aids <laughs> for, for his hat. Yeah. His head, I mean. Where my hat goes. Why do 